we're very happy um, that Ruba Tat also followed our invitation. She's, I think, the perfect speaker to conclude this session. She has um, a degree in medical laboratory science uh, and public health and policy uh, from the American University of Beirut, Lebanon. And now she is um, the pathology and lab manager at the Clemenceau Medical Center in Lebanon uh, since quite a while. Um, and since this is not enough for her, she's also um, a laboratory consultant to support affiliates across the whole region of the Middle East. And she's very, very, or she has been very essential in uh, commissioning the laboratory into automation. And uh, there, there are certain uh, caveats, um, because on the other hand, you still need to work in, in a cost-efficient um, environment, um, provide certain quality services, and she was able to cover all this with ease. And um, we're happy to hear your insights from um, the laboratory perspective. Hmm? Thank you. So well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining me in this educational workshop. I would like to thank Bullman's for allowing me this opportunity to share our experience in the lab and how we implemented the fecal calprotectin on alinity platform using immunoturbid dimetry method. Uh, we would, I would have never been able to do that without our leadership and our quality team that were able to implement uh, this test. Our presentation today, we are going to introduce ourselves, who are we, and what is the prevalence of IBS in Lebanon. And I will go through the journey of implementing uh, the test uh, in our lab and how it had a positive income on our patients as well as on our lab operations. And and what is our, at the end of the day, the take-home message that we have reached in Lebanon? First of all, uh, uh, I come from uh, Clemenceau Medical Center, uh, affiliated with John Hopkins International. We are a 150-bed, privately-owned hospital uh, in Beirut. We are considered to be a center of excellence for certain specialties, such as uh, uh, radio, uh, radiotherapy, robotic surgery, as well as the card, uh, cardiology department. We have successfully finished, uh, succeeded in seventh surveys for GCI reaccreditation, and we are preparing the lab to be uh, CAP accredited. Uh, being a state-of-the-art hospital, the lab also is a state-of-the-art since we implemented uh, our uh, lab automation, and we have in, uh, enhanced our specialization in microbiology to include molecular microbiology as well as molecular pathology and transfusion medicine, and we have started our newly uh, next generation uh, sequencing platform as well two weeks ago. Uh, currently, our, the mission of the lab in Beirut usually to provide a state-of-the-art uh, menu using gold standard techniques in a fast and accurate manner. Because Lebanese patients, I don't know, in the region, they like to shop. They shop around, they go around, they try to, they like to go from one test to another. So our mission was to provide confidence to our physician as well as to patient and to have loyal patients and, and to enhance our community. It came here also with certain challenges uh, because our lab has limited space. We want to increase our menu without adding up so much platforms. At the same time, we do have budget constraints as well as the current, uh, our situation in Lebanon with the COVID-19 as well as after the currency devaluation and the political unrest made some challenges when it comes to uh, access of care to our patients. Having this, uh, we, uh, we have also certain uh, research limitations. Uh, IBS all, uh, is not really that uh, studied. Uh, the latest uh, uh, publication was done in 2022 by Yesbek et al, where they did a cross-sectional study using self-reporting questionnaire. Uh, they looked up for uh, adults uh, uh, older than 18 years old. The risk factors that they have looked into are the eating disorders, uh, depression, anxiety, and stress, insomnia, severity, as well as the regular clinical symptoms of uh, bloody diarrhea and abdominal pains. Uh, it turned out after 425 participants, 46.8% might have possible unidentified IBS. And the psychological distress as well as insomnia severity were significantly associated with higher odds of having possible unidentified IBS, in addition to the cigarette smoking as well as the eating attitudes. However, this study is a bit limited because there's no evaluation for colonoscopy as well as lab findings. Being said, uh, as laboratories, we always go hand in hand with clinicians. We recommend tests for them 
as well as they request us from us. This is it's a bi-directional uh, relationship that works around. However, when we first uh, come to Calprotectin, we have initiated as lab with our GI department. And that first started in uh, 2018. We implemented the lactoferrin calprotectin qualitative test as a start. We did try to validate quantitatively using the lateral flow. However, it was not clinically correlated. From 2018 till 2021, we decided to, uh, with the increased request, because patients don't like colonoscopy. They try, we have, uh, however, they have this anxiety that we need to do it every two years, although sometimes clinically it's not indicated. So the GI came back to us that we need to find a better uh, accurate test. So we looked around and we decided to shift our menu to the Calprotectin uh, immunotherapy, which was implemented in July 2021. Uh, the precision study was done using the control materials uh, for the low and high. We run them in triplicates for five days. As you can see, the coefficient of variation for the low was 3.8%, as, as for the high it was 2.1%, making it a robust technique. Um, for the uh, concordance studies, we evaluated 20 positive uh, immunotherapy dimetry. Uh, we compared it to the lactoferrin calprotectin qualitative, and we confirmed them using the quantum, quantum blue in an outsourced CAP accredited lab. The concordance were 100%, although there was one case that was positive negative. However, on lateral flow, the value was 111.5, which was clinically considered negative. The performance characteristics on Alinity C platform, the measuring range is around 19.8 up to 10,585 microgram per gram. These samples are diluted automatically 1 in 10 for values above 2,000 microgram per gram. The calibration is stable up to 48 days and we have verified the reference range where the cutoff is at 160 microgram and above. The Calex cap uh, we, uh, has two implement positive benefits in our lab. One, because it allowed us to help uh, the technologists not to be um, annoyed when, you, when <laughs> using this tool samples. And at the same time, we wanted to make sure that we, have, uh, we preserve the integrity of the sample. That helped us a lot. And we have seen this, I'll show you later on, with the, uh, with the, uh, with the results, the precisions of the, uh, of the samples. Uh, on another note, we do have a home service program whereby we provide collection of samples for our patients at home. For any patient whose residence is great, more than one hour away, the technologist would go home and collect the samples to sample and would immediately use, it, use the Calyx before performing the transportation. Now the current workflow that we use in our lab, uh, once we receive a stool specimen for the first time uh, testing in our lab, we do, we run, we screen it using the qualitative method. If it is positive, we run the uh, uh, fecal calprotectin turbo uh, and we report the quantitative uh, result irrespective if it is positive or negative. If it is, uh, if, it's, if the patient has previously uh, tested, uh, uh, performed calprotectin testing in our lab, we immediately run it on the fecal calprotectin, irrespective of the previous result. And this had helped us a lot to show the significance of this test and how it is very cost effective to do uh, screening using calprotectin rather than uh, running a colonoscopy. And it allowed us by 2023 to have it covered uh, by insurance companies and we have decreased the load on the patient because be before that time it was out of the pocket. Now in 2023 we do, uh, we are in load and care proficiency testing and uh, as you can see uh, the immunoterpidimetry uh, has around 24 par lab uh, participants and uh, the percentage of CV was relatively between 53.5 and 57.5 which is a bit comparable with the other methods. Test evaluation what we consider evaluation is what had a positive impact on the patient and what is on our lab operations. At the end of the day, we need to survive as lab. However, we will never forget that we always work for the best quality of our patient. So I chose two case studies, which was very interesting, that shows that patients were loyal and our physicians were confident in our value of results. This is a 35-year-old female diagnosed with ileitis and who was having chronic changes in, since 2018. She was cleared col uh, completely by colonoscopy, and then she was 
on Bidonfilac and Pentaza for, uh, for, uh, for Crohn's. If you can see from August 2021, her values were 81.6, and she continued for, tw for 2022 where it was negative, and in October 2023, it was it became completely negative, and then she her physician decided to stop her medication. The second case is much more interesting. It's just, she's a 21-year-old female diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in May 2021. She was prescribed Zylangel 11 milligram. However, because of the situation in the country, it ran out, and she, was, she couldn't find it until April 2022 when she restarted the medication. So uh, her condition improved to having no blood uh, and diarrhea. However, she reported major fatigue and weaknesses. In September 2022, she, she attended to ER having the abdominal cramps and regular stool. She was given prednisone and enemas, and then she was prescribed on Humira or Stellar, whatever it is available for Crohn's. If you see her lab results, in March 2021 and June 2021, at that stage, we, you, we were doing the validation, so we had to outsource the test to, to the uh, CAP accredited lab, and the values were above 1,000. That was what we were able to report. In May 22, she came back, it was above 2,000. And then in September, it was confirmed that it is 2,186. And since she was prescribed uh, Humira and Stella, that shows that there was a decrease in the inflammation by September 2023 to 247.7. How it had a positive impact on the lab? Because we aim to provide the best diagnostic tools, it should have, it should reveal somewhere. It showed in, uh, in two, uh, two uh, things. First of all, in terms of workload, uh, if you compare from 2021 to 2023, our number of patients as well as number of testing have increased by 47%, which is a, a significant uh, uh, value. The age distribution between 2021 and 2022 were across all age group. The bulk was between the age of 18 uh, to 40. However, if you can see in 2023, we have a significant increase in the age group below 18 and above 61. And those cases, uh, when we looked into them, they were ER and inpatient cases. So patients were attended to ER, they had the regular uh, diarrhea and bloody stool. And in order to rule out if it is an uh, IBS or it is uh, an infectious uh, uh, disease or whatever, they have ordered it. And it was, uh, and uh, I'll show you the, uh, the positive rates. Now, for the positive rates, with 2021, we had a 40% uh, positive rate for calprotectin and it decreased by 21% in 2023. This shows that uh, patients are being followed up. There was a positive uh, prognosis for their management, although we had always a new patients attending to our lab. In terms of age group, uh, the positive rates are also uh, being identified for the age group less than 18 and above 61. Uh, luckily, we don't have any positive pediatric age, uh, positive pediatric cases below six years old. As a conclusion, with the introduction of uh, calprotectin testing, IBS uh, awareness has increased in our community. And we are, although the targeted population is between 18 and 60, yet uh, we will monitor this in 2024 if also the pediatric and the elderly population also are being screened for. Immunotherapy Dimetri uh, method helped help us to rule out all the symptoms and help phys GI physicians to identify cases that require colonoscopy being the sole diagnostic tool before 2018 in Lebanon. Such awareness has encouraged insurance companies to cover such tests, and that's why it's being ordered not only in outpatient as well as in ER and inpatient. Uh, from a single test, the laboratory has once played an important role in providing accurate diagnostic tools to physicians and increase awareness of unidentified diseases to enhance the lifestyle and the quality of life for our community. And Bullman Fecal uh, Turbo Test is a life example for, for achieving such a mission. Thank you.